Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'd like to begin the uh, webinar. My name is Steve Rockoff, and this webinar is uh, mobilizing line of business applications with Mobile Lion and Splashtop. Uh, the webinar will be approximately 50 minutes in length, at the end of which we will be answering your questions that you pose inside of the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, so with that said, uh, I'd like to introduce our other speakers today. Jeff Tonkel is Senior VP at Splashtop, and Jeff will cover how much Splashtop can mobilize applications in days and not months. Um, but first, I'd like to uh, have John Breyer begin the webinar. John is Director of Partner Alliances at Mobile Lion, and we'll discuss how Mobile Lion's platform uh, secures both apps and content. Thank you, John. Morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. I uh, just want to go ahead and kick it off with a little discussion about what Mobile Iron does and uh, where we've come in the last few years. So if you look at your screen, you'll see here uh, just a brief history of Mobile Iron and what we've done over the past five years. So we actually founded in 2007. And if you look at uh, 2009, we was when we really launched our first product out into the market. That was really our version one and was really founded around the principles of BYOD and actually bring your own device to the, to the workplace at that time, you can see a big difference in the market. At that time, we were primarily working on BlackBerry devices, and you can see where we've shifted in, in that short amount of time, where we're primarily iOS and Android today. So we do have close to 5,000 customers now. I think, actually, we just crossed over the 5,000 customer mark. And we also have about 250 of the global 2,000 customers. And the, probably the key thing to take away from this chart is really the 97% customer satisfaction rate. Almost more than half of our revenue today comes from repeat orders from our customers. So that's a huge increase for or a huge number for a, an increasing and growing company like ourselves. And that really shows that customers believe in our product, they follow up on orders, and continue to grow with us. You can also look on the right-hand side, the Gartner Magic Quadrant. We've always been in the leader quadrant since Gartner started this publication. I think the first one was back in 2008 or 2009. And we've always been in that leader quadrant. We've maintained that uh, stance throughout the years. And we look forward to continuing that trend as well. So if you look at the evolution of personal computing, you know, Mobile Iron is primarily on, uh, founded on mobile side, but you can definitely see from the PC side how things have changed over the years. So again, when we were founded, that, that gray arrow there somewhere in the 2007, basically Windows was the primary platform that everyone built and, and maintained to. But you can see a huge shift in the market over the last few years. So 2010 was really the beginning of the surge of Apple and Android devices into the marketplace. And 2013, you can see really they began to dominate that area. So you'll see tablets, iPhones, uh, other phones from the Android side, all taking a big chunk of that market away from the incumbents who were people like RIM and, and Windows at the time. So that's continue. We expect that to continue. And you can see that really shows that we're out of the PC and PC era and really into what we call the mobile area. And, and as Mobile Iron likes to say, really the mobile first era where people think about mobility first. They have workforce that are not coming into the office. They have workforces that are maintaining offices that either at home or on the road, and really think about enabling those people in the mobile realm first and PC second. So when Mobile Iron looks at mobile first, what do we really mean? We talk about enterprises and organizations that really embrace mobility as a primary path to deliver information and data to their users. And the way that data is delivered today is actually in a couple different ways. One is applications. So really, this is a new change. You know, before, applications were resident on a desktop or inside your network somewhere, and then people got access to that. And that's really changed now. The apps are resident on devices. And those devices contain the content and data that people need every day. So that's been a huge shift and something that we anticipated. And obviously, MobileIron is one of the first ones out there that had a built-in app store into our product. So we've kind of built around that and expect that to increase as well. Also content, so people get access to content. Now they keep the content resident either in the cloud or in their network and have to basically get devices and get access to that data behind the firewall. So we've enabled that as well with some of our products. And actually, Splashtop is a great example of how we can actually even go further with both apps and content and deliver even more of that to devices and more securely. So we'll talk about that as well. And then obviously one of the key things about Mobile Iron is we've always believed in the user experience. We believe that 
users buy the devices they want, get the apps they want, and bring that down to devices, and we try to maintain that user experience wherever we can. We try to make it seamless for the user, make sure that they get the data they need, and really not in intrusively. So we try not to change the data, change the applications, or even change the device functionality. And that seems to be a really big plus for all of our customers, and that's one of the reasons why we're actually more successful. So if you look at the questions that IT asks, you know, this is really a partnership between IT and the end users. And these are really the common questions that we see our customers asking when they're going to launch uh, some kind of mobile device out into the marketplace. So always the first thing they, they ask is, how do I distribute apps and how do I embrace BIOD? And, and we'll talk a little bit about how we can do that with a new product inside Mobile Iron called AppConnect. We really designed it around BYOD to really separate the personal data as well as the corporate data and make that available to the users pretty much at light speed. Then we talk about how do we manage the operating system. So Mobile Iron, as I mentioned, we have iOS and Android today. We're building on Windows and other platforms and we will continue to do that as those platforms mature. Some of the platforms, like Windows, don't offer the opportunity to do much on the management side of applications, but that is increasing, and we will increase with the market there. So if you look at how do I secure mobilize and mobilize content, and that's really where we'll talk today about Splash Shop. How do we use what Splash Shop offers through their applications to actually get that data inside the firewall, inside the enterprise, and actually mobilize it and bring it out to devices? So we'll talk a little bit more in detail about that. And then really, how do I manage security and identity and privacy? And that's where MobileIron does a really good job. So we have automated the whole process. With our central core platform, what we call a virtual smartphone platform, we can actually set policies and deliver those policies out to individual users on their devices pretty much seamlessly. So the IT person will set it and basically forget it. And it'll all move out onto the device, and the user will just basically have that user experience on his device and get the data he needs from the network side. So we'll talk a little bit further about that in detail. So how does Mobile Iron do that today? The first thing is you know, when we talk about BYOD, it's basically allow users to choose their device and bring in whatever they want into the enterprise. And then we actually build around the app. So there's been this huge explosion of apps and delivering content. It can be anything from Salesforce. A lot of people are out there using Salesforce, uh, accessing different applications in the cloud. Uh, so all that stuff we actually can bring down to the device. So Mobile Iron has what we call an app store built into every product, whether it's our cloud-based version or our on-premise version. Really the core and key aspect of our product is, in, is to have that app store built in and deliver applications seamlessly out to devices. What this allows us to do is we can separate that personal from corporate data and deliver it out to those devices without interfering with what people have on their device on their own. So if they want to have games and other things out there, it really allows both to reside on the same device. And with App Connect, which we'll talk about, uh, was really the main theme of this talk with Splashtop, we can actually even secure that further. So we can secure the Splashtop application and really lock it down and pre-configure it and, and deliver that out to the device seamlessly. So then we look at content. So where does content reside? And again, this is another key area where now we can actually use applications to access content, and that's where Splashtop comes in. So we have content in all different forms on people's desktop, on their servers inside their IT, in SharePoint. And really what Splashtop's enabled by being AppConnect partner is to deliver that content out to the device through their application. So we can secure their application, wrap it into a container, and then deliver that out to the device and people can access back into the corporate resources without really any worry about security leaking. So Splashtop does a really good job because basically they don't deliver any data down to the device. They're really just delivering screenshots down to the device and getting the user the information they need. And then once the connection from the application is lost, the data stays on the corporate side and never really resides on the device. So that's an even higher level of security and compliance that we enable. I'm going to skip through this slide since we're a little bit late on time and just talk a little bit about Mobile Iron Platform and what we do. As I mentioned, it's really a partnership between the user and the IT person. And here we can see that it all starts with email. So on our AppConnect program, we start with email and we actually lock email down even tighter. So we can deliver out email configurations. Users automatically get profiles built onto their devices along with the apps and content they need. And basically, all that's done seamlessly behind the scenes by the IT guy and delivers that all out to the devices. 
And if we want to go a little bit further with AppConnect, and this is really the innovations that we have on AppConnect today, we've taken that to the next level. So first thing that we do is with our virtual smartphone platform, we can take an application, either wrap it or embed our SDK into that application and perform these four basic functions with that. Now again, these, app, these functionality that I'm showing here, app tunnel, app config, security, and the ecosystem are all really not 100% required. So users and IT can actually pick which features are important to them per app and deliver those to devices. So the first one we'll talk about is app tunnel. So what we've been able to do with app tunnel is tunnel directly each individual application directly back to an enterprise. So we secure the individual application, configure it on the, the next step over is we configure it. So we configure it for that specific user. So we would put the tunnel location, we would put the username, user ID, all that information would be pre-configured for the user. So, so he doesn't have to do anything other than launch the application. And then it would automatically know how to get back to the server on, on the enterprise side. Then obviously what we can do inside the application is we can layer security as well. So we can say which apps are allowed to be opened with which data. So let's say we have an email that comes in that has an attachment. We can say that attachment can only be opened in certain applications. And then on the email side, we can also say, hey, that application is not allowed to have cut, copy, or paste. So we can actually turn off by app the ability to actually cut, copy, or paste information from inside the container, outside the container. And we can also restrict from outside the container into the container as well. So really set granular policies per app that allows information to flow either in the container or outside the container or restrict data from flowing in and outside of the container. And then obviously we have the full app ecosystem as well where we can have all these third-party apps working together. So Splashtop is a really good example of an App Connect ecosystem app that's been enabled. And so on the app ecosystem, you know, we have things like editors, we have things like email, all those applications that are in this ecosystem and all work seamlessly together. So this shows a little bit about AppTunnel, and again, I'll kind of speed through this quickly. And what you can see here is we have, instead of a wide VPN, where if you have a VPN type tunnel, all the data flows back into your network. So if someone's playing a game or using Facebook or some other application, if you have the wide VPN turned on, that data will definitely flow back into your enterprise along with the data that you do want to go back. So what we've done on App Tunnel is make that app specific. So you can see here App Tunnel and App Traffic flows individually app by app back to the enterprise. And also we use the same encryption profiles on all those apps so that apps can talk to each other, but they, but they don't necessarily need to um, you know, they won't be able to talk to other apps on, on the device unless they share that same encryption. So we really lock it down and containerize all those apps so they function properly with each other, but they don't talk to the other apps around them. So you couldn't basically open data in an app that wasn't part of the App Connect program. And again, this is an optional feature, so we don't have to do this with every app. So the, the encryption profile of apps talking to each other can be done outside of App Connect as well. And so, so apps in AppConnect can talk to each other, but they don't necessarily have to tunnel. And I think what you'll see with Splashtop is they are working on tunneling next, so it's a feature that they're adding to their application. But right now, it actually will just function fine without AppConnect tunneling being enabled on the app itself. So the great thing about configuration is we can actually set all the data for the user so he can get directly into his container without having to do anything. So if you look on the right-hand side, this is what the user will actually have to do. He just has to input his passcode on for the container, and then every app that's in there will know exactly where to go, what server to hit, and basically have his username and password all done for him without him having to know anything. So he has one password to remember, and then all the apps that are inside the container are automatically, automatically configured and turned on. So really looking at this from an overall hierarchy of what we've done with AppConnect and what security layers we've enabled on the device. It's really, if you look at it from a holistic standpoint, we've authenticated the user so we can link to ADLDAP or just provide user credentials for each individual application. So basically authenticated the user. We then authorize the apps that that user is allowed to have on his device so we can say which apps he can have, which apps can work together, which ones can copy paste. So that's the access policy that allowed for each app as well. And then we can actually encrypt all that. So the data that's inside those apps is encrypted on the device. 
So even if someone was able to access that data from outside the container, they wouldn't be able to read it because it would be encrypted. So we basically lock all that down in an encrypted container on the device. And then if you think about it, with App Tunnel, we can actually get the usage and analytics by user and by app, what's actually flowing back and forth between the user and the enterprise. And then finally, if somebody does something wrong and or they just leave the company, let's say, we can actually selectively wipe that whole container. So we just remove the corporate data. We don't touch any of his personal and private information. And all that will be all done seamlessly without the user having to do anything. So IT can, from his end, say, hey, I want to remove this user's information from his device and basically selectively wipe that from the device. So talk about a little bit about what Splash Shop has done. And you can see here, I'll, I'll hand this over now to uh, Jeff to talk a little bit further, but you can see here on the right-hand side it's Mobile Iron with our email, apps, content, and all the certificates and policies set on the device. And then we can actually, using the Splash Top App Connect enabled app, really give you access to even more content. So what Splash Top will walk you through next is really what they've done to the app to make all this other content and data available on the device even more thoroughly and more securely. And with that, I'll hand it over to Jeff. Thank right. you very much. Yeah, thanks, John, and good day, everybody. Um, let's think about this for a second. I know there are a lot of applications out there that you'd like to get on your mobile devices, and they weren't originally designed for those mobile devices. So when you think about it, we really have two basic choices. We're taking an application that already exists, taking it in its current form, and giving it out to all these new mobile device form factors. And the first thing you can do is kind of like the three R's. You can either rewrite or refactor or restructure the application. You know it's a lot of work. You've got to redesign the, the client side of the application, and that's what you're going to do. And you may be doing that for some of your most highly valuable applications. But the other thing, the other option that you have is you can remotely render that application to any mobile device. And remote rendering is a technology that's been around a long time. We're using remote rendering right now in, uh, in this meeting software. Re re uh, remote rendering is used in remote PC technology. It's actually used in virtual desktop technology. So remote rendering is not new, but Splashtop does it in a very, very easy to use, high performance way for not getting to a meeting, but actually getting to an application, getting to an application and actually remotely controlling the application. So we have two choices about how to, to uh, get a new application on a mobile form factor. Like I said, one is to rewrite it, and the other is to remotely, remotely render it. With Splashtop, our whole, our whole uh, product line is designed to allow you to remotely render those applications with as little work as possible. It really means that you can mobilize those applications by remotely rendering them, and as a result, you don't have to code them. So there's zero coding. There's no training to be done because the, the user of the application is going to see the same application in the same form with the same user interface as they would have seen on their PC. There's no waiting to be done because you don't have to do anything to the application. You've just decided to remotely render it. And as John mentioned earlier, there's zero data leakage. And the reason is, is because really what the user is seeing on their desktop is really a video of uh, a video stream of the application. But on top of that video stream, we obviously add a control, a control channel. So in addition to seeing the video stream, you can control the application remotely from any one of your mobile devices. The history of Splashtop is that it really entered the market in the consumer space. And it became a wildly popular, the leading product for remote application access in the consumer space. We've got over 14 million users that really love Splashtop. The reason is is because it's easy to use, it's high performance, it's so high quality, high availability remote application access. Over 14 million users in the consumer space. To show you how successful we've really been in the consumer space, we, uh, we're in the top 25 best-selling iPad apps of all time on Apple. We're the, uh, we're the top new paid application in Google Play. We're the top selling Kindle Fire application. We're the top selling Nook application. We're the top Windows remote desktop application. You can see a lot of success here with every uh, different client side device. And the number one best selling playbook application. And then finally, there are a number of device manufacturers that have decided 
to go ahead and bundle our technology on their devices, make them available to all your users. So, so Splashtop has been wildly successful in the consumer space. M several reasons. Obviously, it's been easy to install, easy to use, high performance, high availability, much higher performance than any other remote rendering product in the marketplace. If you look at what's happened with remote rendering and using remote rendering to gain access to applications, we have over 62% of the Fortune 100 employees are already using Splashtop. So many of you in these companies already have your own employees that are using Splashtop. You may not know about it if you're the centralized IT guy, but what your own employees have been doing is going out and getting Splashtop and using it to get remote access to their personal computers or their Macintosh. So let's take a look again at the ways that you might be able to get access to um, get a, get a mobile get an application uh, access on a mobile device. If you look at this survey, CompTIA did an enterprise mobility survey of 502 uh, U.S. IT executives just a little while ago, and what they found out was that companies are pursuing just two or three simple ways to get these existing applications on their mobile devices. One of the main things that they're doing is they're exploring or implementing virtual desktop technology. They're looking at that. It's been a familiar way that people have been able to provide application access and new mobile device form factors. The other way is building mobile custom applications. And the third way is obviously a little like that. They're not building a new app, or they're not, but they are webinizing it. You know, they're going ahead and putting a web interface on top of it. So three things that people have been looking at, virtual desktop technology, refactoring, rewriting, and moving the application to the web. But if you look at virtual desktop technology, and we just think about it for a second, it has been complex to use. It's been expensive. It has limitations. Virtual desktop technology was really designed so that IT had a way to centralize uh, desktop stuff. So you know they were bringing things in-house. They wanted to be able to easily manage it. They wanted to be able to control it. And as a result of that drive, we really ended up with virtual desktop technology. Virtual desktop technology was not really designed to provide mobile application access. It was really more for IT to take control of their own resources. And so we even have an example on this slide of a book that was written by Brian Madden calling the VDI delusion. And so you know, from a Splashtop standpoint, we want to make remote rendering of your application as simple as possible. We don't want to get into the complexity of what you've had to deal with in terms of virtual desktop technology. The next thing we look at is, OK, so now you've decided maybe you're not going to use virtual desktop technology, but you're looking at rewriting your application. And we all know there are a number of challenges here that we can have a little fun with. The first thing is, which device are you going to rewrite the client, the client for? And if you, maybe you've got to choose all of them. If it's a BYOD environment, you're going to end up supporting several if not all of these device types. And that's a lot of work in its own right. <clears throat> the next thing you've got to decide maybe is which of all the hundreds of applications that I might want to provide on a mobile form factor, which one am I going to do all this work for? And so you know, I haven't talked to any IT organization or any application development organization or any independent software vendor that has the resources to refactor or rewrite every aspect of every application they provide in the marketplace. There are always many applications that they don't believe they're going to get to in any reasonable period of time. And again, our argument is that remote rendering those applications is the easiest way and the fastest way to get them onto all your mobile users' mobile devices. Other things you might look at, you might look at, OK, well, we also are going to integrate with a uh, mobile device manager or mobile application manager, exactly like MobileIron. Well, our technology is integrated with MobileIron, so it takes, it takes that work uh, off the table. You might also look at, what am I going to do when these new device types start crashing or start changing? And I've got to keep up with that. You might look at what's going to happen as new form factors come out, when every time a new form factor comes out, you may want to restructure re the, the client side application, and that's more work that has to be done. When you're remote rendering that technology, you don't have to worry about any of these things. We, as the, um, the, the technology that's going to provide the remote rendering, we take care of supporting all the different device, all the different device types forever. So you don't have to worry about compatibility. You're not going to have to worry about mobile versions. 
you know, losing all their desktop customization because you've gone through, you've had an application that has a lot of desktop customization and as you move it to the, the new device types, you sort of minimize what that user actually gets. You don't have to worry about those issues. You don't have to worry about whether or not the users are going to actually use the applications because they're familiar with them already. And they're going to use them exactly as they were as they were originally designed. You're not going to have to worry about new operating system versions. You're not going to have to worry about new device types, as I as I spoke about earlier. So there's a lot of stuff that you have to think about if you're going to rewrite or restructure an application that you're never going to have to worry about if you remotely render the application. And if we look at all the applications, there's really a long tail of line of business applications. This is a wonderful chart showing you just a very, very long list of uh, shrink wrap enterprise applications. And there are a lot of them. And we've talked to a lot of these vendors. Many of these application providers are mobilizing some of their application, but most of them are not able to mobilize all their application. They get to a part of it, but they don't get to all of it. Remote rendering the parts of those applications that those ISVs can't get to is a very, very common use of our technology. And we have a number of ISV partners at SpliceStop that actually haven't done any work to mobilize their app other than to integrate with our SpliceStop remote rendering technology. So you have things like shrink wrapped applications that haven't been, that haven't been totally uh, mobilized. You have those shrink wrapped, shrink wrapped applications that maybe have been customized and so you can't really mobilize them easily. There's a lot of work to be done. And you have your own in-house developed applications that you might add to the list and say, how am I ever going to get to all of those applications and get them on my mobile device form factors? And you can take all those applications right to those mobile devices using uh, SplashTop remote rendering technology. So in summary, you know, we have a product that we're going to show you after, um, after we do a poll here that's called SplashTop Enterprise. And it does the two things that we believe you really need in concert to mobilize your existing applications. It will do desktop rendering so your users can get directly to their desktop and get to any application through their desktop. And it can do direct application rendering so that if you want your end users don't have to go directly to their desktop, they can go directly to the application. We believe this remote rendering with application access, remote rendering with desktop access is the combination that you need to mobilize your existing applications, the combination that you need to pro provide business agility because you can do these things right away. You don't have to touch the application. It's a fast ROI because there's no recoding or restructuring. It's full compatibility because you never have to worry about the device form factors or new devices coming out or changing. And finally, it's secure because you're really playing a video of what the application is displaying. So there's zero data leakage. And on top of the video, then we provide a control, a control channel so that your users can manipulate the application remotely from their mobile device. So what we're going to look at now, just in summary, we talked about really there's two ways. There's two main ways that, that we believe you should provide access, you can provide access to your mobile to your existing applications from your mobile device. And the first way is quite simply just having people go from their tablet or even an iPhone, uh, an iPad, or uh, an Android tablet and give them access to their physical device that resides behind your firewall. Give them access to that device, their PC, could be a PC or a Mac, and through that, app, through that device, then they can just open up any application that they had access to and they can remotely control, remotely use that application from, uh, from that environment. The second way, though, is that you can put these applications on your servers. You can be running the application, for example, on a Windows server, and you can give your users access directly to that application. So if you don't want to give the user access to their desktop, but you want to give them access, let's say, directly to a Word application or PowerPoint or any other of your Office productivity applications, you can run those applications in the Windows Server uh, RDS environment, for example, and give your users direct access. And again, Splashtop believes that the combination of you getting direct access to PCs, to your physical PCs, perhaps behind the firewall, and getting direct access from your mobile device directly to the application, those are the two things that you need in combination to be able to provide the wide provide uh, all your existing applications to your existing users. 
the way we do this at Splashtop is that we provide a piece of software that you actually run in a DMZ or behind your firewall. And we call that Splashtop Center. So unlike, for example, we're using GoToWebinar that's completely web-based, this is not a web-based solution. This is an on-premise solution for high security, high performance, and high control. You install Splashtop Center on a server, on a Windows server, in your environment. What I've done is I've uh, walked you through just the fact that you can get access directly to your desktops, control, uh, get access directly to an application all controlled by a single environment that we call Splashtop Center. And I just want to close by letting you know that uh, we really have the, the fastest uh, technology in the market with the lowest latency and the fastest frame rates. Exactly here you can see that uh, Splashtop was used uh, by NVIDIA, NVIDIA right, in their uh, CES 2013 video, or 2013 demo, uh, because of the high performance that we could uh, show taking 3D graphics and remotely rendering them. We also have a very simple user interface, because if you think about it, what you want to be able to do is use your tablet and be able to use gestures that you're familiar with on your tablet, but have those uh, actually do to the application on the other side what you expect it to. And, and uh, we have very, very simple, easy to understand gestures that make sense for the tablet so that uh, you're using those gestures that make sense for the device that you have in your hand. We also have some unique features like whiteboarding and annotation. So you can annotate on top of anything that you're viewing. And you can take snapshots and uh, save those for later review. Uh, of things that you've annotated. And finally, we have something that's extremely popular, which is shortcuts and overlays. And you can see on this slide that you can have shortcuts with buttons or, or dials or um, scroll bars that you want. So you can add those on top of your application very easily. So it's easier for your user to use their uh, different form factor device with your application. As a matter of fact, on the right-hand side here, you can even see that we've added a joystick on top of a 3D application that we're rendering. And then finally, we're going to talk about how we integrate with, uh, with Mobile Iron, and Steve's going to walk you through that just real quickly. Okay, thank you, Jeff. So uh, I'll just reuse one of the graphics Jeff had shown earlier, so you'll just get a sense of uh, how these two components work together. Um, so in, uh, in Mobile Iron's world, uh, as John mentioned, uh, we have the administration console, the VSP, and what that's going to do is connect to and push policies down to the device using the Mobile at Work app. And once that's configured, um, Splashtop Enterprise is configured within VSP so that what, what you can now do is set policies and push those down to the Splashtop Enterprise app. So here um, we're able to push the location of the Splashtop server, the uh, user's username and password, and they are um, the Active Directory credentials that are pushed, uh, excuse me, that are pulled out from your Active Directory domain. Um, there are also options for logging users in automatically or disabling the, the fields that are pushed down in, in um, so that just basically um, you know eases the uh, the login for the users. Uh, John had mentioned Sentry support. We plan to support that in Q3 as well as being able to do the similar functionality for the Android app. Just very briefly, just cover a couple of screenshots of the Splashtop Center and VSP consoles. Here you see um, the Splashtop Center console, as you remember from Jeff comments, this runs behind um, your file in your DMZ on your own server, so it's a simple um, way of just being able to uh, organize users and devices. Uh, you can um, physically group uh, devices and uh, desktops together, uh, take a look in real time at who's connecting to what with a full audit trail and also set policies. Within VSP, uh, when you click on the Apps and Configs tab, you'll get this other uh, screen pop-up that shows you um, how you can configure uh, those options as I described here uh, within um, within this um, within this section. So setting passwords, emails, um, the location of the server, and so on and so forth. So what I thought I'd do very quickly within the, uh, the remaining time is to just quickly show you a demo. So here are the two apps that we've been talking about, Mobile at Work and Splashtop Enterprise. I'll go ahead and just show you the Mobile at Work real quick. And so you saw at the top left that uh, the iPad was connecting back to the VSP server successfully. And the green check mark against the device in compliance just means that the various profiles that are being provisioned onto my device, um, I'm meeting the, the compliance of those profiles. So that's good news. So what I'll go ahead and do now is select our Splashtop Enterprise app. And the first thing it'll do 
is check in with the Secure Apps Manager. Um, this is a, a four-digit passcode that's uh, pre-provisioned pre as part of me authenticating myself and my device to the mobile line environment. So I'll go ahead and enter my passcode and now the app is launched successfully. You can see here that the Splashtop Center location as well as my email address, which is really my username out of Active Directory, is already pre-populated. Uh, my password has not been pushed down and so therefore I can't log in. But as described previously, you can go ahead and um, push the password and instantly log the user in. Instead of connecting to my desktop, I thought what I'd do is show you the instant demo. You see the button there in the middle of the screen. And this will connect you to um, a set of uh, servers that we have hosted in Amazon that have Splash Top Center as well as uh, Splash App technology that's integrating with Windows Server 2008 using uh, RDS. And so I can uh, either connect to a full remote desktop or a set of applications. I'll start with the desktop just to give you a feel for what a full Windows desktop looks like. And I'll go ahead and just uh, connect to it and it will uh, very quickly provision that uh, Windows desktop for me. And now I have Windows 7 on my iPad, which is kind of cool. Um, so any, other app, any of the applications that the administrator has given me rights and permissions to here would be displayed. There can be obviously proprietary applications, standard office productivity, 3D, ERP, uh, in fact any IE web app that you may already have uh, in existence that, um, that your users use. I'll go ahead and just uh, choose the PowerPoint app. And so you immediately see now that we have our, um, PowerPoint fully rendered on my device. I can go ahead and move forward. You will also see that animations are being played. And that's one thing that uh, is lacking in many of the mobile apps that uh, allow you to present from your iPad or Android device to a projector and projecting PowerPoint. Uh, a lot of the time the, the animations don't work very well. And certain features and functions as well um, don't pass through. Uh, so there's uh, major incompatibility issues. Um, and because this is your desktop that's being streamed live here, I can go ahead and click on that uh, thumbnail of the video and that's an embedded video that will now actually play and you'll be able to uh, obviously hear that as well, which is kind of cool. Let me just uh, turn that up for you. And I can stop that video and I can also uh, close that down, move on to the next slide. So one of the things that Jeff talked about was this uh, ease of use and high performance. And in, in that ease of use category, we have a number of unique features to Splashtop. One was whiteboard. The other is customizable shortcuts. And let me just show you that in operation real quick. On the bottom right, I'll just select that. Uh, I have a toolbar that um, we won't discuss today, um, but there's a variety of different options there to switch between monitors, um, scroll bars, uh, et cetera, et cetera. The bottom right, there's a small icon. If I click on that, what you'll see is a um, set of uh, icons that are somewhat transparent that are now overlaid over PowerPoint. And so all of these icons represent different functions. And there's a variety of different profiles that I can select. Uh, the one that's currently selected is the Microsoft Office Windows on the left there. If I go ahead and choose the one next to it, which is PowerPoint Slideshow, you'll actually see the icons change. And so these represent specific functions and features. So instead of um, trying to find those features within menus or to try and remember how you access those uh, from a touch device, obviously you're used to more using a keyboard and a mouse, then I can do a variety of things. I can go forwards uh, a couple of slides, I can go back, I can stop the presentation or I could restart uh, the slideshow. I could pick up the pen on the right here and just circle or highlight some, some functionality. And so, uh, what I showed you there was a selection of profiles. As I said, I can go ahead and choose any of those. I can also um, just uh, remove those icons from the, from the screen. I can show them. Um, I can go ahead and uh, obviously choose other ones. I can choose the transparency here. You can see these icons change transparency. So this is a great function. I mean, this what this allows you to do is to uh, go ahead and uh, 
kind of lightly reskinned web apps with certain functions that are very well suited to usage on a touch device. So that's the PowerPoint presentation uh, within, a log, uh, within a full desktop. I'll go ahead and just close this session and click OK. And now go ahead and stream an application. And you'll see here a selection of applications that you can choose from. We already did PowerPoint. Uh, and so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and choose the browser. And what this will do is launch IE uh, full screen. Um, and so uh, that will now present to you a website. I think that that's what it connects to. And this is a splash top website. I guess that's no surprise. So like anything I can be doing in front of the desktop, I can be now doing um, on my iPad, I can zoom in and out. There's a request for a 330 day trial. What's interesting here is I can go ahead and um, select some videos that I might want to play. So we have here on the Splashtop website uh, a video showing how we work with a CAD application, Patient Now, Flash on an iPad, PowerPoint on an iPad, where well, you've seen that already, uh, and .NET apps on an iPad as well. I'll go ahead and just play the patient now demo real quick and just fast forward to the section which is probably the most interesting so this is uh, as an example uh, a physician um, with an ipad next to the patient just looking at the results of maybe various ct scans or x-rays and of course uh, the physician um, is connecting to a uh, back office computer that uh, is somewhere else on the, in the building and obviously you've seen the zoom function already so that's just one of the ways, uh, one of the possibilities that uh, you can use uh, Splashtop Enterprise for being able to access a variety of different applications or full desktops, zero coding, zero weight, zero data leakage. Just a couple wrap up slides here. You know, when you do this remote rendering, it's really future proof. And we've got some examples here of a, a smart wristwatch uh, of the Google Glass. You know, these devices are going to change. And when you've decided to ro remotely render an application, you're leaving all the device client-side technology to the remote rendering vendor like Splashtop. We'll take care of that. All you have to worry about is putting your application uh, uh, under control of the Splashtop center environment. And finally, and finally, you know, it's not going to take any time at all to, to take these mobile these existing applications and mobilize them. So what we're suggesting is maybe take a look at the ones that you you know are on the list that you're not going to rewrite, you're not going to restructure, but you want to make your users happy. And with Splashtop, you can mobilize those corporate applications and desktops in days, maybe even in hours. It only takes you less than 30 minutes to get Splashtop Center up and running, get it configured, and put your first applications under control so you can find your so you can provide access to your users, to their desktops, or directly to the applications. And you do all of this mobile application, mobile device access without any risk because you're remotely rendering and using the Splashtop technology. There's no recoding to be done, as we mentioned. There's no training to be done for your users. They're going to use the application in the same way on their tablet that they used it on their desktop. And finally, uh, last but not least important, obviously, is zero data leakage. You know, they're going to get access to the Splashtop client only through the mobile iron environment. And when they get access, they're only going to be seeing a video of the content of the application. The data from the application never leaves uh, leaves your enterprise. And um, and with that, we'll go on. Maybe, Steve, you want to close it out and give them these links? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, in order to start your free trial, there's a couple of links here to Mobile Line and Splash Top. And as I had referenced in the very short demo, um, you can experience our online demo without any further setup. You just need to download the Splash Top Enterprise app. Please search for that exact phrase because we have many apps in the app stores. And just click on the online demo button. And if you'd like to talk to somebody immediately, there's a couple of contact points. Um, Brandon was uh, helping us out this morning as we had some connection issues. Um, so please utilize those contacts. Um, we appreciate your time. I think we really don't have too much time for questions, but John would like, just like to say a few final words. Yeah, and also, uh, this is John from Mobile Iron. So I've answered most of the questions online here, so I don't see any remaining questions left. Also, if you'd like to have a trial of Mobile Iron, we do offer a 30-day free trial as well that's using one of our cloud-based operations. So just go ahead and to the Mobile Iron website and sign up for a 30-day free trial, and you can get access to that right away. So thanks for everyone's attendance. And with that, 
I think I'll uh, I think we can all just say goodbye and sorry for the issues that we had on the webinar, but we will send out a recording out to everyone. Thank you very much, everyone, and enjoy the, the rest of your day. Thank you.